a Plaguelands Media production. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media bringing you another book review today. But before that, it's a rainy Saturday afternoon. So, uh, cheers. Now, I've been really kind of getting into the Star Wars uh, Extended Universe books that aren't canon anymore, but um, they're still a lot of fun to read. And uh, a lot of them are out of print or very difficult to get. So I purchased a bunch of them on Kindle a few years back. And then uh, as I was teaching uh, over the winter vacation break, uh, it was just easier to read these on my Kindle app on my phone or on my actual Kindle itself. So today I'm going to be reviewing Star Wars Jedi Search. This is the first novel in Kevin J. Anderson's Jedi Academy trilogy. Kevin J. Anderson, of course, very famous for his um, continuation of the Dune series with Frank Herbert's son. Now, I read this trilogy way back in the day when I was in high school, and I remember bits and pieces of it, and it was pretty cool at the time. But now I'm looking at this from the point of view of all of the material that has come out um, recently, the new movies, the TV shows, the animated series and whatnot, and how does Jedi Search hold up to that kind of uh, level. At the moment, I'm in the process of watching The Bad Batch. Uh, season 2 uh, has just started and really enjoying that. And it kind of got me thinking, how do the old Star Wars novels hold up to that kind of content today? So I'm just going to come out and say it pretty fucking well. Um, let's get right into the next episode off. So I want to point out on the cover, you can see we have Luke, Leia, Han, the Millennium Falcon, and uh, this female character who uh, is Admiral Dala, who is kind of the new big bad in this series. Now, there, I, I'm pretty much going to spoil this, but, you know, <clears throat> it's a given. The book starts with Han and Chewie. Uh, heading to Kessel on a diplomatic mission. Now, this is set seven years after Return of the Jedi. The New Republic has been kind of formed. Um, Leia and Han have twins and uh, another baby. Um, so everything's kind of moving. There have been books in this New Republic kind of era before this one. So things have been pretty much established. But you don't need to read them to enjoy this book. So they're heading to Kessel, which uh, those of you that are fans of Star Wars know is where they um, mine the glitter stim spice that uh, Jabba the Hutt was so pissed off from uh, by Han, you know, dumping all the spice after being uh, pursued by the Imperials. Um, they get there and they are attacked, captured, and made to go and work in the mines themselves. This is where they meet um, a young boy, well, a teenager, I should say, called Kip Durren, who is Force-sensitive, and he was actually taught by an elderly Jedi that Han and Leia had met in a previous book that I haven't read. We find out that... Uh, the Imperials have been overthrown on Kessel and is now being run by a complete douchebag frog guy who blames Han that um, Jabba the Hutt took out his vengeance on this guy because the spice that Han was supposed to deliver to Jabba got lost. And so he forces um, Han and Chewie to work in the spice mines of Kessel. Now... Just very briefly, the glitter stim spice reacts to light. So the spice miners, um, which are all prisoners, 
have to work in complete and total darkness. And they meet this kid that's been living and working in the spice mines for eight years. Um, his parents were taken as political prisoners by the emperor and uh, he was forced into servitude. Now, at the same time, uh, Wedge Antilles is working with construction crews on Coruscant and they find a device that the Emperor used to determine whether or not someone was force sensitive during torture and interrogation. Luke has implored the Senate to rebuild the Jedi Order. He wants to uh, go off and find new recruits and find the location for his new Jedi Academy. Leia hasn't heard from Han. She's freaking out. There's a side plot about uh, Mon Mothma trying to get um, the planet uh, Carida, which is an Imperial training ground for stormtroopers to come into the New Republic. But the ambassador pretty much tells her to fuck off and the rebels suck and long live the Emperor, blah, 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 blah. No one gives a shit. It's a good side story, but no one cares. At this point, Luke has gone off to... Um, a planet called Ol Shah, where he believes there is a Force-sensitive um, person there, a descendant from a former Old Republic Jedi. And Lando goes to a casino planet because there is a guy that seems to be winning, and Luke teaches Lando how to use this device to see if this guy is Force-sensitive. Luke uh, goes through some trials on this planet, and uh, the... The four sensitive guys like, okay, I will come with you. Lando finds out that the guy who is uh, winning a lot is just cheating. Um, and there's a kind of a funny side plot there with the um, 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 Golish blob races or some shit like that. All this while, Han is uh, still working in the mines, but he gets a chance to escape with Chewie and Kip. And he takes that chance, and the only way to do that is to fly a stolen shuttle into the Moor Cluster, which is a cluster of black holes that is very dangerous. But Kip says, I can guide you through it because he can use the force and, you know, guide the shuttle. So they guide the shuttle through <clears throat> the Moor Cluster, and inside they find in the center of this cluster of black holes is an Imperial weapons installation which was where the Death Star was invented. The Imperials capture um, the shuttle, bring them onto a Star Destroyer, the Gorgon, which is run by Admiral Dala, which is kind of like the new big bad for this, uh, this series. And Admiral Dala interrogates Han and realizes that the Emperor is dead and the Empire has fallen, and she basically freaks the fuck out. At the same time, there is a scientist who designs these weapons um, on the scientific research installation. And she interrogates Han and realizes that the weapons she designed were for were not for um, destructive purposes, but they're being used for destructive purposes. And her new weapon is a ship called the Sun Crusher which can shoot a device into a sun and basically blow up an entire solar system. She becomes disillusioned with this and decides to help Han, Kip and Chewbacca escape the, uh, the Moor Cluster. Luke discovers that Han has been missing. He and Lando... Uh, sorry, there's another little thing where Luke goes back to Bespin and uh, meets another Force-sensitive guy and agrees to bring him into the new Jedi Academy, which is really cool because you get Luke gets the flashbacks of the fight with Vader and losing the hand and whatnot. Um, he brings them back to Coruscant and finds out that Han and Chewie are missing, tells Leia, Lando and I will go and find them. You find us a place for the Jedi Academy. Um, Han and Leia's children have been brought back to Coruscant, they're now two years old, and uh, they've been living on a hidden planet with a, with a nanny who was introduced in the Timothy Zahn uh, series, a nanny called Winter. Um, so they come back, so then we get Leia juggling administrative rights, uh, administrative duties with being a mother, which is 
kind of cool, I guess. It, it wasn't a bad sequence. Han, uh, Luke and Lando go to Kessel. They know the guy is bullshitting. They discover the Millennium Falcon there, steal it, and at the same time, Han, Chewie, the scientist, and Kip are making their escape in the stolen Sun Crusher. Um, so they everything kind of intersects. At this point, Admiral Dala gets away. We don't know what's going on, but... Uh, on a little bit of a side plot, Mon Mothma comes to Leia and says, I know the perfect place for the Jedi Academy, and it's the Masasi Temple on Yavin 4, which, if you will remember, Yavin 4 was where the Rebels kind of had their base before the first run on the Death Star. Um, and that kind of ends the book with everyone being reunited and leading into the second book in the series, which I am reading, called Dark Apprentice. We have um, some great new characters introduced. We have a great villain in Admiral Dala. She is just cutthroat and bloodthirsty. Um, it was an exciting read. I loved the Kessel sequences. I thought they were great. Um, Han and Chewie were in the Spice Mines of Kessel for about three weeks. And it, you really get to see Han... Like, his bravado when he's talking to the guards. And then when he's away from the guards, he kind of breaks down a little bit. Um, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed seeing Han in a weakened position. So that was... Star Wars Jedi Search by Kevin J. Anderson. Would I recommend this book? Most definitely. It was a fantastic, fun, easy read. Um, and... Really enjoyed the idea of Luke trying to restart the the Jedi Knights, um, and it was it was just a, a really great time, and it brought me back to uh, memories of reading this book in high school, which I always enjoy when I'm reading. So, with that said, everyone, stay safe, have a drink. Have another one. Have a fantastic rest of your day. But most importantly, and I cannot stress this enough, please read a fucking book, people. <laughs>